And then level three, wow, 16, 15. Oh my goodness. Do not use bass boost level three on the speaker leads. Hey everyone, in today's video, I am retesting the Kenwood DMX 709S, this time with Apple Soundcheck turned off. In case you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, you may want to check out my preamp testing blunder video where you can learn about how various settings in your phone and your phone apps can be robbing you of sound quality and output. So without further ado, let's give it a go. All right, everybody, today I am retesting the Kenwood DMX 709S, this time with Apple Soundcheck turned off in my phone. We are using the same test tones that I always use through Apple Music, Lossless, the SMD and more engineering, one kilohertz test tone. Right now we are connected to the front preout. We're going to see what kind of output we have. Before I press play, let's go into the settings. I did just hook this up. Let's make sure that everything is flat in the EQ. Everything is flat there. What about sound effects? I like to leave everything off except for Supreme because in the car, that's what I'm leaving on. Fader balance is zeroed out. Crossovers are off. Time alignment, we are zeroed out. Shall we get started? All right, I'm not sure where the volume's at, but obviously that signal looks nice and clean. All right, we're at 16. This goes up to 40. I expect this to be clean all the way up. And we are. We are also getting, look at that, five volts. Hello. Check your phone settings. If those of you are not familiar with the channel, don't know what I'm talking about, check out that video I made called Preempt Testing Blunder. And you will want to go through all of the app settings in your phone, whether it's Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Amazon HD, and just make sure that you have everything set correctly and that there isn't some type of audio normalization feature turned on. Because if you have something like that turned on, it can significantly drop your output. And that's what I ran into the first time I tried to test this. Okay, cool. So let me switch to the rear. I expect to see the same thing. This is in here tight. Yep, looking good. All right, I'm gonna pause this and switch to the sub. Let's go back to test tones. There we go. And let's see where our subwoofer level is at. I think it's at zero. Yes, the sub is at zero, volume's all the way up, and we're getting 4.5. So what is the max that I can put the sub level? Plus one, we now have five volts, and that signal still looks pretty clean. Plus two, we start clipping. So if you wanna put your volume all the way up on the head unit, with everything flat, the most you can do on your sub is plus one. Now on the flip side, let's say you wanna be able to put your sub max at what volume is it safe to do that? 31, and you're getting five volts. Shifts the threshold down nine notches on the volume. That's awesome. This is such a great value. I really love this head unit. For a 450, you can't beat it. You're getting awesome audio performance, plus idyllic micro compatibility, the capacitive touchscreen. It's nice and responsive and it's vibrant. This is such a great head unit, even though this looks, the graphics on here are so cheesy. The performance is fantastic. It really is. All right, let's play a little bit around with this. So let's go back to the front and let's play that same one killer test tone and start putting on some of the sound effects and see what that does. All right, so we are back on the front pre-out with the one kilohertz test tone and we're gonna go into our sound effect menu and see what happens when we turn any of these things on, if anything. So loudness with this frequency, I don't know if it's gonna make a difference because I don't know that that would really be a frequency that would get boosted. It doesn't look like that made any difference at all. What about if I change the frequency? I'm just gonna do that from my phone real quick. So we're back on 40 Hertz. Voltage dropped. Now if I put loudness on, no, that's interesting. Not really making any difference. Okay. I'm gonna switch the track back. Come on, camera, focus. To the one kilohertz test tone. Back to five volts. 
Oh, I should have done that with base boost. Base boost is actually lowering. All right, well, now I'm curious. So if I go back to 40 hertz with base boost on, there we go. <laughs> That's why I don't like base boost. It just, it jacks everything up. So, all right, if you wanna have base boost all the way up, that's gonna jack up your signal. So don't go past 35 if you're gonna turn base boost on. All right, let me turn the volume back up. Go back to the one kilohertz test tone. Drive EQ, no, no effect. Space enhancer, that's more of like a time alignment thing. So that really, oh, it did have an effect. Look at that. Oh, I was not expecting that. Oh man. All right, now I gotta try it with the 40 hertz test tone. All right, back on 40 hertz. Space enhancer's off. If I turn it on. Yeah, that really drops the output. Leave that off. I, I thought that was almost like a time alignment thing, but now I have to reach out to Josh Bowen and get a little bit better understanding of what space enhancers are actually doing. Because that's, that's really dropping your voltage on multiple frequencies. Wacky. Okay, back to one kilohertz test tone. One kilohertz. Supreme on and off. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Less, less output. Okay, so another good reason to leave Supreme on. Get a little bit more output. Realizer. Okay, that that's boosting it a little bit just to the point where it looks like it's starting to clip, actually. A little, a little bottoming out. Oh, that's so interesting. I don't know what that's doing, but it's funny because it looks like it's, you know, bottoming out down here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll try to zoom in on it when I edit this, but the top looks smooth. So I would leave Realizer off. It, the signal definitely looks smoother that way. And then let's see what Stage EQ does. Stage EQ drops to the output. Why? Huh. Well, I have no idea why, but this testing just proves my point about all of these things that Supreme is the only one to leave on. Let's see what happens with the sub doing the same thing. All right, back to the sub. And I probably have the sub level still jacked up to 10. So we'll put that back down to zero and go back into our sound effect menu. Loudness. No difference. Face boost. Yeah, I expect a difference there. Look at that. All right, so now that we're on the sub, if you have base boost on level one, and I have my sub level at zero, remember, but base boost at level one drops your max volume down to 35. Seems to be the same for level two. Yeah, starts, starts to get a little funky there at 36. So if you're gonna put base boost on, do not go past 35. Turn that back off. Turn the volume back up. And then what about drive EQ? 4.56. So drive EQ boosted a little bit. Interesting. All right, let's turn that back off. And then let's see what Space Enhancer does to the sub channel. Yeah, drops, the, drops that output all the way down to four. Leave that off. Supreme. Oh, did it go down like 0 0.1? 0 0.2, oh, that's so funny. So on the front and the rear, we got more voltage with Supreme on, but on the sub, we got a little bit less. I mean, 0 0.2, not a big difference, but just interesting. Huh. And then Realizer, not really making a difference. And then Stage EQ. No effect. Huh. No effect on the sub. Well, that's interesting. I'm gonna move on to testing the speaker leads. All right, so I'm now connected to the front left speaker leads. 
and I'm leaving Supreme on, everything else off in the sound effect menu. EQ is still flat. And we're going to turn the volume up and see at what point this starts to clip with our one kilohertz test tone. Oop, there we go, 25. 24, we're still clean. 25, it starts bottoming out. Getting pretty serious voltage. Yeah, 8.46. If I go all the way up, what do we get? 13. That's quite a bit of current. And if you are hearing some bleed through, I have to tell you, I don't know what is causing that. But I have noticed during doing these testing videos when I'm editing, I can actually hear that test tone getting picked up somehow over the microphone. I can't hear it in here, but it gets getting picked up somehow. Maybe somebody smarter than me can explain that. All right, now what if we change that frequency to something with bass? We'll do the 40 hertz, back to 40 hertz. Let's see if it's 25 with that frequency. Yeah, and then what if you are someone that's going in here and you know what, I want more bass. Oh, well that didn't make too much of a difference. I was just gonna go in and jack it up. Yeah, that's still your cutoff. All right, let me flatten that out. And let's go back into that sound effect menu. If we turn loudness on, no difference. Bass boost. Yeah, bass boost level one. Then you gotta lower that threshold to 22 for the internal amp. If you have it on level two, you gotta lower it to 20 maybe even 19 and then level three wow at 18 on the internal amp 16 15 oh my goodness do not use bass boost level three on the speaker leads look at that look how nasty that is that signal, that is very much the type of signal that we see from factory head units, which is just tying back into my last video about preamps and why I hate using line output converters for like four channels. I have a, a very good client of mine who, you know, he's he's been on a budget and he's got some really nice equipment, but everything is going through his factory Toyota radio. And that is what the signal looks like. It is just garbage. And that's just with everything flat, just speaker leads it's just not clean so please guys leave that off leave bass boost off and then you'll get a nice clean signal all the way up to 24 on the internal amp of the radio and for any of you that have this radio and you're having issues with dc offset the dc offset error normally in kenwood is referring to a speaker short or if you are running too low of resistance however there have been reports of people running into that error and having no output on the radio when they're just using the preamp. Kenwood has actually just released a software update for this issue. So if that's something that you've run into, make sure that you go to Kenwood's website and get the latest firmware for this radio. All right, so running off of the speaker leads, Supreme on or off doesn't seem to make a difference on that signal as far as how smooth it looks. Drive EQ. No difference. And then space enhancer. This was dropping the output on the preamp. Let me see if it changes the threshold a little bit, right? You get an extra notch of volume. This must be dropping the output somehow. Because with that off, see how it starts to get clipped a little bit? That's so weird. Realizer does not seem to have any effect. Stage EQ. Looks like it dropped the voltage. Yeah, so you get an extra notch of volume, but that must be internally adjusting the output for some reason. Cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. Lots of cool new videos on the way in the works. We are currently working on the board. As you can see, John is right there. He can't wave, his hands are tied. We have a full installation video on a 2022 Audi S4 a 1991 Mazda Miata getting a DMX 958XR. That car is mint, that's a fun one. And also the DMX 958XR versus 908S. All of these things I am working on and will be posted soon. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.